So Ocarina of Time, or Ocarina of Time if you prefer, is one of the most well-known games in Nintendo's catalog. It is considered an all-time classic. It's considered one of the best games ever made. Um, review sites like Metacritic and GameRankings.com, I still think on both sites, it is the number one rated game of all time. And it's also a game that is infamous, or really famous, I guess, in the speedrunning community. Now... I'm not here to talk to you guys about glitchless runs and, you know, 100% runs and all the different types of speed runs that are out there, uh, including runs that allow for glitches and new world records being set. I'm going to generally avoid that kind of talk here unless it's something just totally crazy that no one's ever thought of before. But one thing that is very interesting about games, especially classic games, but even newer ones, is discovering glitches. And here we are nearly 20 years, you know, 19 about, since Ocarina of Time released and a brand new glitch was just discovered that is really going to blow up the entire speedrunning community uh, and really blow up a lot of aspects of the game. So for those who don't know, and I don't know how many of you there are, but in Ocarina of Time, there are two different stages to the game. There's where you play as Child Link and where you play as Adult Link, and you put the Master Sword in the pedestal in the Temple of Time to switch back and forth between those eras once you reach that point. You start off the game as a child. And you have to go back and forth to complete different tasks to ultimately uh, go save the day and defeat Ganon. Now... The interesting thing in this game is there are items you obtain as a child child, and items you obtain as an adult that you cannot use, vice versa. So if you get the Megaton Hammer as an adult, you cannot use it as Child Link. And likewise, for some reason, Duka Sticks or Deku Sticks you get as a child, you cannot use them as, as an adult. Which I don't know why a stick... I, I understand the hammer too heavy for a child. don't really get why a stick can't be used, but... That's just the way this game works and the way the game logic works. There are child-exclusive items and adult-exclusive items. And despite all the glitches and all the things people have discovered in the game, that's never changed until now. So I discovered this through a YouTuber named Exodus122, and he posted this a handful of days ago, and I've just been kind of sitting on it because I'm flabbergasted, and I didn't know how to approach this video. But he discovered a brand new glitch in the game 19 years later that lets you equip any item at any age in Ocarina of Time. Now, obviously, you have to have the item first. And this is the way he describes it, and I'm showing clips of it happening. Uh, and it says, this is a new way that I figured out, which lets you equip a Deku Stick, Boomerang, Slingshot as adult, Hammer as a child, etc. Place the cursor on the item you want to equip, then press R to get to the map screen. Next, press Z so the screen begins to rotate on one frame and I'll put up the image of the one frame and then press down left or up left and a C button to equip the item on C. When you hold the direction after the screen rotation, the first item your cursor goes to has to be equipable as your current age. Also, if you have two items on the rightmost column of items, you need to use up left instead of down left for the trick to work. Note that using a Deku Stick as adult will crash on the Nintendo 64, but it does work on Virtual Console and GameCube. So he's obviously done some testing on this, and that's obviously something you want to be aware of if you're using this on an original N64. But this glitch works seemingly across all versions of Ocarina of Time, uh, the original Ocarina of Time. I don't think it, he confirmed or tested it with Ocarina of Time 3D, but this is huge 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 it is hard for me to believe that this glitch even exists and has been discovered so many years later and this kind of gets into a bigger discussion on glitches in general do you enjoy glitches because i love glitches uh I don't love when they're game breaking, of course. You know, no one likes glitches like the saving in the canon room in Twilight Princess and your save file is borked, you can't get out. Uh, no one likes uh, glitches like I experienced in Majora's Mask, where when I saved at the Owl statue in my copy of Majora's Mask uh, back on the N64, before the Stone Tower Temple boss, it would wipe my save file. Those are not the kind of glitches I that I think anyone really enjoys. Those, those suck. Those are game-breaking. But when we're talking about glitches that aren't necessarily game-breaking, they're just 
you have to do them on purpose to make it happen. Uh, and not even like falling through the floor glitches, which I know some people enjoy those glitches. Some people enjoy boundary break glitches. I mean, there's entire YouTube channels based on boundary breaking games. But just looking at the general aspect of glitches, like being able to skip to the end of Ocarina of Time as Child Link, being able to do uh, just lots of crazy things in games uh, that aren't possible without glitches has always been fascinating to me because it's doing things that are unintended in the game and I find that highly entertaining and that's one reason why I like speedrunning that includes glitches because it's just so interesting watching people find out these things and putting in the massive amount of time it takes to discover these. I mean if you think about this 19 years later here's a brand new you know <laughs> glitch for Ocarina of Time. I mean, 19 years and we're still discovering new glitches in that game. That's just insane to me. And, you know, the glitch obviously isn't perfect because you're not meant to use a megaton hammer as an example as a child. So, they, so the item doesn't really appear, but you're still clearly using it. <laughs> you're not meant to use a Deku stick as an adult. So the animation, you know, the image, the Deku stick doesn't appear, but he is clearly holding it and you can use it. It's, it's just a really interesting thing that I... I find highly entertaining, and I want to know your stance on glitches in games. Do you find them entertaining? Uh, do you think they're stupid? Do you uh, ho wish that all games would never have any glitches, period, in the existence of man, which will never be the case? The it's impossible for any developer to come up with every single possible thing a person would want to attempt to do in a game and make sure that it doesn't break the game or do something unintended. It's just not possible, especially when we're talking about today's games that are just so massive. I mean, imagine in Breath of the Wild, there's no way that they could possibly test every possible situation a player is going to put themselves in, uh, no matter how long. And if they did, it would take like 15 years for a game to come out. Uh, so I'm, I'm just interested. Do you guys like glitches? Do you think they're fun and entertaining? Uh, even if you don't like doing them yourself, do you like watching other people do them? Uh, do you think it takes a high level of skill? I know it takes a high level of skill for certain glitches. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just a really interesting conversation point. And this is just crazy to me that 19 years later, man, my mind is just blown. Um, anyways, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime. I'll have links down in the description for what I talked about so you can go watch the video and see him talk about it. Uh, the, as I said, the explanation is kind of complicated, but again, for people who like to perform glitches in Ocarina of Time, this really doesn't seem that hard compared to some other ones. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, and folks, I will catch you in the next one.